Jason would immediately quit and or get sponsored by every influencer energy drink company. I can't believe Amanda's missing this. <laughs> this is the quality like the content. Cup. It sounded like the World Cup in, what was it, South Africa with the Vuvuzelas. Yeah, the Vuvuzelas, that's what I was thinking of. Ooh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the God Mode channel. I'm your host, Jason slash the wizard. You have fortunately and or unfortunately joined us for another Friday night of D&D. <laughs> They've apparently added uh, audio emotes for Discord, so um, it's it's bad news all around. Um, welcome everybody. Hello Discordian. Hello Quackastaka. Hello Mama Bear and anybody else who's hanging out with us right now. Hope you're having a fantastic evening. Tonight we're diving back into some more Lucent Odyssey, a game that merges Dungeons and Dragons along with the fun sort of uh, homebrew rules of Oregon Trail. So check that out if you haven't already. Uh, who else is joining me on this fine Friday evening besides Opie slash Amanda, who unfortunately can't join us tonight? Hey everybody, it's Luke. I'm playing Lankin, who is a Warforged Fey Wanderer Ranger slash fighter. What's up, guys? My name's Kevin, and I'm playing your Kalashtar Druid. Time. Okay, next person. <laughs> we'll come back to him. What's up, everybody? My name's Slim. I'll be playing a, uh, <clears throat> a bugbear, uh, faceless hydra slaying rogue by the name of Uncle Jimmy. Oh. <laughs> there, we there we go. Hey, I'm Kyle. I'm playing Professor Barr, furball alchemist, artificer, circle of the moon druid, dean of natural sciences. At the illustrious Ravis Eterna. Hey everybody, I'm Nick. I'm playing Forte. He's a uh, dwarven mechanic. He's take care of the cart and uh, helps his friends out to capture the uh, shadow essences of scary monsters. Thank you, everybody. Bay, hello. Bay says, y'all ain't dead yet. Proud of you. Well... Yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> They're trying to get there. Lack of trying. Mm -hmm. Um, Not maybe, without maybe. lack of trying. Yeah. Um, I just want to do a couple bit, quick bits of housekeeping, then we'll dive into our session. A huge thank you to Amanda Otten for all of our art. I really appreciate it. The beautiful art by her uh, that you can see here. Go find her profile over on her socials. I slapped the, the uh, at sign for her Twitter. Go f give her a follow. Give her some love. She may have some commissions open if you want some for your own game. Uh, etc. Discord says no mimic rooms yet. No, none yet. Discord, <laughs> there may be some more. Um, mimic room was awesome. <laughs> I was just telling my uh, Thursday uh, D and D players over and start playing about that room. Uh, that was a lot of fun having Glossé walk into that big vault that was a mimic. Fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, fun. <laughs> uh, we also use channel Thank points here on the channel. You can give people plus ones to their rolls, and we also have the fun session long random elated or forlorn condition either f up or give someone a bonus for an entire session we also usually have stream stickers but i was playing around with some of the plugins and extensions here for the channel so we may not have those for tonight but i'll have those back up probably by next session we also use a lot of homebrew rules here for the game so if you're ever wondering like how do they keep track of this stuff or how do they determine how far they can move what are these rules you can just hit exclamation mark rules in the chat and get yourself a breakdown on how it all works. By the way, if anybody out there is free on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I have an open seat for my uh, start playing game, Rise of the Wild Knot, that is taking place in the same universe that this campaign and all of our Friday night games have been taking place in, the homebrew plane of the Twixt. Come join if you want to get slotted in. You can create any official character race or class. I'll even allow homebrew as long as I can give the thumbs up. And um, you can get a character creator come join us. Uh, first session is half price, and uh, you get a little bit of that off. And although it is a pay-to-play game, you can expect the same quality you get from stuff like this, our Friday night game. So hopefully that looks good to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, Bay Man is out for tonight. So sad that he's sad that you are. I'm sure she wouldn't want to see you. Um, that's really it for my breakdown of stuff let me go ahead and play the intro uh yeah discordian time actually did say r so or kevin did say r 
I'm gonna run the intro for the channel and then what we're gonna do is hand out some inspiration if anybody needs any more and then we'll dive into our game. So hang on everyone, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back everybody. All right, let's see here. Tyne, it looks like you may be the unfortunate like one. Okay. Nope. Nope, Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> Unfortunately, you are the victim this week. If you don't mind, to the best of your recollection, of course, please let us know what happened last time on. Loosen to Odyssey. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you see, like, uh, yeah, so we left the, uh, city of dudes. A bunch of big, hairy, muscly, meaty men slept in meat. They, uh, they all got together, hung out midtown. It was fantastic. Talked to them, got a little info. Uh, that was about it with them. Then we, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I can't remember the name of the town we're in. The one that is currently on fire. Episidium. Episidium, that's it. So we uh, took a few quick uh, jaunts through the day, night. Uh, I was lucky enough to navigate well. And uh, we got in here and met up with the uh, our shadowy friends, Assassin, and, well, uh, a, a giant elephant-like creature and or man and he uh was kind enough to uh give us the down low after uh, we spotted some slime trails of that big scaly slimy eight-headed looking sack of crap then we uh planned kinda planned a little more got the cart filled it with dynamite, made a dummy cart that we got from uh, the City of Dudes. Uh, let me hop on it. I was lucky enough to uh, come barreling ass in with uh, some uh, dexterous moves and uh, send it into the big ugly uh, son of a gun and blow him up for massive damage as well as parts of the town. And uh, thank goodness no guards. The guards uh, did their part. Then we took turns waylaying into this thing until it used its long noodly appendages to uh, pull us in and devour us. But uh, before the last of us became Taste the Dactyls and or Snacks, um, he gulped me down like a meat seltzer on a hot day and uh, wow. I cut my way out, finished him off, and we were lucky enough to save our nearsighted giant skeleton friend Lincoln. And now we're celebrating on the pile of this uh, gooey, uh, and you know, whatever it is. Thank you very much. That was a pretty succinct recap. Yes, the party had just killed a false Hydra. The creature with its final gasps of silent uh, quells as it screeches out. You can feel the reverberation at your feet. But with all of you having some form of protective way to keep your hearing in check, so not to hear the chant of the beast and forget it, um, you only see it uh, wailing in silence as the body falls lifelessly. Both Tyne as well as Uncle Jimmy cutting themselves out of the beast now that it has fallen. 
Tyne might have actually need help with that. I don't think I have a blade. <laughs> okay, Do well, you, yeah. Like, transform halfway, like, give yourself oh. a bear claw or something. And there I, have you a, go. I have an ice knife. There you so, go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dope. Oh, my. I'm going to reach over and try to get my hand out. Did you get the soul? Did someone get the soul? Yes, here, here. You can, you can take this back. Good. Good. Grab it greedily. I guess we don't have that card anymore. It kind of exploded, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The yeah, cart uh, basically was atomized but in the explosion. I'll just uh, delete that from the old character sheet then. <laughs> Unless you need to fix, it's useless. <laughs> <laughs> Does somebody want to go get that uh, hamster before he uh, runs away? Oh, yes. Uh, leave it to us. Come on, OP. Okay, Mr. Bob. Will, will. <laughs> Opie, Opie. <laughs> Just become a Pokemon when you're not here. <laughs> All right, then. Everyone, dust yourselves off. We haven't much time to lose. I would like to, har as quick as I can, because I know we're trying to get the hell away from this, uh, harvest whatever I can from this thing to throw it into my meat locker. Yes, I want some of its teeth. <laughs> uh, you can harvest it, uh, but to do so will take, unless you want, uh, if you want anything of significance, doing that will take an hour. That's the t the worth it. I want some of its teeth. Yeah, absolutely. Which actually begs the question, how long do we have now? Um, yeah, how many days has it been? You guys have... Let me double check. I know it was, uh... Indeterminate, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's been a second. I think, since I think we had four days up. left. Let me double check. Yes, you still have a couple days left over. About four days, that's right. Because oh, we, can, we can whoop. We can whoop closer and then... I don't think it was that far from a help us hand, was it? It wasn't Since four days. Go back, sure. I guess. Yeah. Yes. Enough time to harvest teeth. Take your time. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna whip out these these fucking Whoa. leather workers' tools and get oh. to work. All right. Yeah. Each of you can make me a check if you're going for uh, something specific. And then, are, is anybody doing anything about the uh, marketplace that is still currently on fire? For, Forte will start creating water. Uh, the guards can handle it. Start putting things out. Is there a euphemism for peace? Yes. That's all right. Gonna be 18 on tooth harvesting. Oh Is yeah, survival you're... good. Yeah, survival works. You're able to definitely harvest a good couple teeth. Thank you. That's How a, many uh... teeth, Jason? Uh, roll me a d20. Oh yeah, boy. Five, Five whole teeth. Five whole teeth. I'm going to use that plus one I just got from Mama Bear to throw in to make an even 20. I'd like to get, if I can, a screamer sack. If there's like a some sort of nodule or vocal cord for all the terrible things that it was doing to us. If not, I'll just settle for a good chunk of it to bring back to the scientist. What is this, monster hunter? No! Oh, God, I hope here. that shows up on stream. It does. <laughs> oh, it does. Yeah, it all does. Goodness. Whatever I hear, everyone else hears. It's wonderful. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, Good make night, a everybody. check. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy. Uh, with a 19, Uncle Jimmy, yeah, you are able to... Um, there's not a vocal sack, per se, but there certainly is... Um, sort of like a area where you see a little bit of a bulge probably like an adam's apple as you cut in and yes you are able to uh slowly work out the the organ that contains the vocal cords yes and uh just at least one tooth that i'm gonna now uh, adorn to my uh um holy symbol i have around my neck mm-hmm mm-hmm 
Um, as you are both harvesting those things, Forte, you moving around and trying to put some fires out, several of the guards begin running up. Um, they yell out before running up and they say, they kind of stop seeing this large thing here and they yell out, Is the beast quelled? It appears quelled, Lincoln says, like, with half an arm in one of the creature's mouths. Do we, oh, do we, yeah, I guess we took out. Uh, yes, um, it, it's no more. We, we killed it. Some of us were inside of it and then sliced our ways out. It's, it appears to be dead, but we're going to mutilate it horribly to make sure that it doesn't come back. Uh, the guard nods and turns and says, Men and throws a hand forward and you begin to see several more guards who begin to push in each keeping like a pretty wary eye on the large beast but they begin to sort of push past and are going to sort of lend a hand along with you for to put the rest of the fires out you guys are working on putting on some of this out yeah um the Guard, as he's watching you kind of finish cutting this stuff out of this thing, looks to you and says, or looks to just you as a whole group, and says, Do any of you have any idea how long this beast was remaining hidden through its abilities in this town? I f feel like someone told us at some point, but I just can't remember. I'm sure there are probably many things that happen throughout town that none of us will ever be able to fully recognize, even when the thing dead. But if not for your group, the well wishes, we would have never even been made aware of its presence. For all we know, it could have just continued to consume. Rotting the core of Episidium. Thank you. We we were not about to let that happen. He Please. looks and says, "Is there anything I can do to provide aid to you all? No one asked you to do this, and yet do we need do we need anything? I don't really think so. Mm. No." The fact that this blight has been vanquished is enough. Uh, speaking of, I know Manda usually tracks the harmonic flux, but if anyone can pull up, up that sheet, this yep. removes 30 points, uh, or I should say Ooh. increases the harmonic flux by 30 points. Yep. Nice. Ooh, sweet. We all know Kevin loves the spreadsheet. As long as someone else makes it, I can I can work it. Do we want to spend a night here, even though it's you know still early, or do we just want to head out now? Uh, we're how beat? We're pretty beat up, I think. Yeah. Just close to max. I think we could stay here rather than uh, fast travel back, because I want to. I want to have people find the uh, the catacombs that it was hunting out of, too. Do we need Ooh. to long rest? Can we just short rest? I mean, I'm well low on spells. Oh, okay, all right. Side note on that, we could go uh, see if we could pilfer anything from his uh, tomb. There's got to be something in there if we want to. I mean, it, it belongs to the people here if you guys want to just let it be well and, i mean we should check it first to make sure it's safe i mean they might check the tomb to see do i mean do they get no one gets like memories back right jason or anything no, I don't, I was wondering. none of you remember even with the beast dead none of you remember that last member of your team and the memories yeah. come back we ain't getting memories back. I mean, we can go check it out. We already did check it out once when it was gone, but we could go again. And to be fair, Lincoln, when initially going down there, 
I think I think it was Lincoln, but it would have it, it could have been one of you. you. That is where you did find the pack that was from your six yeah. members. So you did sort of look in the pile previously. So that that's not to say there there may not be more in there, but you you have gone there. You have kind of checked it out. A, uh, a, well, I, I'm gonna look to the guard real quick and just say, you know, uh, I mean we. I don't want to say we're going to take any coin or anything for this. Uh, we did cause some damage to the town. You think uh, maybe uh, we could get at least a uh, room for the night and some food, you know? A uh, free that, that room and board for the rest of whatever time you need to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to name a day after us here. Right? Could we get lemon in our tea, please? <laughs> it's not too much bother. Something a little bit colder than room temperature would be great. <laughs> Well-wishing day sounds like it would be pretty fun to have in a town square. <laughs> Well-wishing day. Yes. Oh. I like the sound of that. Can, can we make sure, because this thing appears to be a hydra of some sort, that we cut off all of the heads to make sure they don't grow back? If they start growing back, it's probably not dead. Continue cutting. Uh, the, <laughs> the guard looks and says, I understand you're mutilating the creature. Would it be more fitting that we have some guards try to build some form of pyre, burn what's left of the remains? Oh, yes. yes. And also increase surface area by continue mutilating. Burns faster. Yeah, you, you see that 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 statue over there. We kind of, you know, it kind of blew up a lot of it. You know, you can build the pyre around that, and when it's done, you know, just, you know that it happens to look like a few of us. That that wouldn't be a problem. You know, I could just put it back in the middle. Put it back in the middle of a ring of fire. <laughs> do that. Cook it. Are you sure there's nothing else we can do for you? I mean, I, I hate to ask if, on behalf of the group, maybe a, a healing potion or two, something. I, mean, I don't want to put you guys out too much. I, like I said, we did do some damage here, but you know, if it's not too much trouble, if if not, you know, I, I get it. But I don't want to speak for everybody here. Three, maybe four packets of ketchup with that. <laughs> I, do you, do you or anyone you uh, know? anything about uh, the land's past Oblivia? Hmm. Uh, no one really goes beyond Oblivia nowadays. As far as most of what I've heard from the traveling merchants and those through town, that place is no longer habitable. Uh, okay. Beyond that, I'm not sure I can help with much more. Maybe the settled lands ask... are here in the first three regions. Okay. Do you know anything of the uh, the town of dudes? <laughs> mm. I've heard word that there is a certain town here in the region that seems uh, primarily male makeup, but I couldn't tell you much about it. I've grown up and spent my entire life here in Episidium myself, so... Mm. Is there anything in particular you're trying to learn about it? Just to make sure that they are all uh, above board lads, and that maybe we, uh... When we visit another time that... They are uh, forthright, they make sure that they say what they mean, mean what they say, and... If they need help like you did, that we could help them and it wouldn't come back and uh, hurt us badly. We have occasionally offered aid to them in the past, but they have uh, summarily dismissed it, saying that they can take care of themselves. So we admittedly don't do a lot of interactions with dudes nowadays. <laughs> but Fair as far enough. as I can tell, they didn't seem nefarious by any means. We get that. About right. Um, What's thinking. our... Uh... What's I was our... thinking our real currency here is kind of like upgrading the wagon. Maybe they can put the bill for fire resistance coating or combat plating. How much is that? Still? The wagon. Uh, 500 and 250. Not a lot. The guard looks to the others and back and says, 
we may not have a ton in the town's coffers, but we are one of the larger regions of the settled areas here. Um, if that is what you ask for, I could offer one of those upgrades to afford something like that, that we will foot the bill. And I can also offer five healing potions, or one for each of your group, I should say. As, uh, that'd be really good. Hmm. It's just, just just regular healing potions. Um, he is going to, I don't know the name of it, he is going to offer uh, one for each of you in the party, and it's whatever the next tier beyond the standard is. Greater it's, healing potion. It is... Uh, uh, super, yeah, greater, greater. Yep. Pretty good. Um... So, what do you guys think? Combat plating is plus 2 AC, plus 10 HP. Flame resistance is what it sounds like, resistance to fire damage. Combat plating. Combat extra plating. HP is... Extra HP helps us in way more situations. Yeah, alright. I'll dig that. Solid logic. Combat plating, sir. Just drop a bunch of steel through it, please. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, well, well, we'll help you foot the bill, but you'll need to speak with the helper's hands for the upgrade. Oh, sure. Yes. Well, so generous. You're a lovely man. The drow figure steps up and says, So it looks like you were able to collect what uh, we were looking for. Indeed. This is good. When you have the time, you should return to Grimacord and pay back what you owe us. Of course. Do that, and we shall be back on a level playing field with one another. Our plan is to head there post haste after our business here is concluded. Very well. Well then, I'll be taking my leave and begins to sort of skirt himself a little bit away from the guards and more sort of into the alleyway shadows or disappearing. He seemed nice. Damn it. We had an opportunity to get some stuff and I used my last cigar. Sorry. This is an eyebrow at you. We can buy you cigars if that's what you're missing. Yeah. No, they didn't have any last time. That was, that was the problem. Maybe they forgot. Maybe the cigar maker got ate. Maybe it's in that uh, cave that we should uh, procure items from. I mean, invest what are we, in What are we doing? What are we, yeah. are we, we're going to the cave? We're going to the cave now? Uh, we go check out the cave. Sure. Let's go. We could rest first if you guys want to. That way, at least uh, in, we probably should do that. At least I a short rest. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Because I ain't got no health. So, yeah. uh, after quelling the beast and tearing off some souvenirs and probably just doing a general bit of mutilation to it, just for good measure. After a wee bit of skinning. The rest of these soldiers begin slowly but surely gathering up portions of the creature and beginning to pull in several carts and things to um, throw the portions that they begin to cut up of the creature and load them up on so as to bring them to what you imagine to be sort of like the open area at the far end of town where they can probably have a open space with which to burn the remains of the thing. You all take a short rest here and are able to regain some health if you want to use hit die. Probably maybe get some little stuff back, etc. Well, if anybody needs healing, I can use a couple spell slots. I mean, I could too if they yeah, needed. And then that's 13 more. That should top me off and leave me with a single hit dice. Okay. Jimmy? Uh, I'm good. Okay. Fine, good. 
Actually, I'll just I'll just yeah. spin my last one while I'm here. There you go. Smoke him if you got him. Speak it with you. Two under the maximum. I have a lot of health now. Hmm. Okay, okay. And then after a short rest, what's the plan? Uh, I think we were just going to do like a sector sweep of the layer and make sure there's not any like shinies that we missed or I don't know, Hydra eggs or something. <laughs> right? Ugh. It is an interesting question. How would something like this procreate? <laughs> Through the screams of children. Yeah, do we it even want to know? spontaneously apparates. Oh. After taking a little bit of time, you all decide to push ahead into the area of what looks to be a at one point it looks like you sort of blew the entrance in as a cave-in but the stonework and rubble seems to have been pushed aside likely from the beast able to slowly push its way back out but that also means that you now have an easy way of entering into the undercity sewers in which it at one time held its home and begin to press forward towards the end of the long stretch of the sewers, finding yourselves at the area where it once made its air. Greasy, grimy human guts. Um, I suppose a perimeter sweep wouldn't hurt. Anybody with keen eyes and a dark sense want to have a look? I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of check do you want, Jason? Uh, whatever you think is going to make the most sense for peeking around. Survival? Perception? Uh, perception would probably be the best. I'd take investigation maybe next. Survival probably won't tell time. Or rather, do you have... Do you have a uh, expertise in perception, or should I just make my own? Because I've do. got a pretty good one. I get plus nine. Okay, and mine's about the same. Uh, go for it. Yeah, you you got a ten percent better chance than me. <laughs> That's a twenty-eight. Woo! I could not have achieved that. Very nice, <laughs> Uncle Jimmy. You do find some glints of things that you spot. They are just unfortunately somewhere in the middle of the massive pile of bones, a stench rising off them that crafts through the air and makes your nostrils uh, flare, and you have to descend down, crawling over them. Your feet sort of shift into the bone work, several crunches and some dried blood cakes at the sides of your equipment but as you're able to press in you are able to find um 700 gold pieces amongst a couple oh, different bags and things like that it's a lot of gold it's pretty good we don't have we don't have to tell opie about this right we could just <laughs> I mean, 100 100 each and 100 uh, in the party party gold 100 a, each 100 of the party sounds good okay a potion of fire resistance oh that's dope and a oh. potion of cure moderate wounds. Now we're only minus five fire, fire resistance potions from <laughs> the ambush. Does anybody right. want to take those? I got enough healing potions. I've been holding on to them. I'll just keep it. Sure. Right. Everybody add their 100 gold, though. Don't forget it. And then you crunch back through the warps pile over to the group, handing it off to the others. Hey, uh, Lincoln, before we go, you uh, want to re-up or add a little uh, more to you? There's about like 37 of you in there. It seems disrespectful, given the circumstances. <laughs> I didn't kill these people, after all. Yeah, that... 
you, you, Jimmy's gonna take two seconds and walk over and just say maybe like a light prayer you know someone falling from the hunt a little of that and just kind of step away Mm -hmm, yeah, come mm -hmm. to think of it, I guess you've never seen Lincoln ever take any bones from anything he doesn't he didn't kill or participate in killing. Yeah. It's odd, isn't it? A pile of bones of people that no one remembers. Yes. A real tragedy. In, any of you uh druid types got any way to decompose this stuff faster? Maybe clear it up a little for him? It's no. bones. Yeah, I guess you're right. Bones on stones. <laughs> if I were them, I would simply collapse the whole structure. Just leave it as a memory. Ah. Maybe but it's not up to us. <laughs> Maybe after a long rest, <laughs> we could do that, but... <laughs> I mean, it's not up to me. I, I, well, I suggest they do it. I'm not about to do anything else for these people. We've done enough. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Well, at least we can tell the guards about it. They City can decide. Handle it. We go do that. Da -da 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 -da. So, grabbing what may be left of any interesting items in here, as Uncle Jimmy recoups with the others, you all decide to. And seeing that there doesn't look to be any other immediate dangers in the area, you all begin to exit the sewer system and make your way back towards the sort of downtown area of uh, Epicedium itself. Okay. Such a nice town when there's not things trying to eat you in it. It's all right. So, I, what what time is it, like in the game? Um, it is at this point. Uh, let me double check. The image behind you here is making it probably look like evening time, but in fact, it is about one o'clock light time. It is essentially morning time. Well, we we did like. We didn't we like sleep on the edge of town, so it's yeah. been like not that yeah. long since we slept. Yeah. Which technically you can only benefit from a long rest once every twenty-four hours. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, with that being known, I say we revise our plan. We uh, go back to the helper's hand and start getting these upgrades installed. A uh, good idea. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I Agreed. Goodbye, Episidium. May you never be plagued by a horrifying memory beast ever again. <laughs> uh, Laters. Um, bidding the town farewell, you all get inside of your wagon and focusing on the harm or, or stand around the wagon rather and focusing on the harmonic emitter which has been gifted with the ability to transport yourselves across the map. There is a flash of light, and you find yourselves being transitioned to somewhere else as the cart begins to take you all from this area here and transporting you back to this region's Helper's Hand Guild. Hang on just a second, we'll throw the music up, and then we'll get the... Apps moved over. Hang on. Da, da, da. Somewhere how, here. How does it time travel on? Like between like hitting 88 miles an hour, spinning around in circles, <laughs> like some whirly gig bopping around. Like how does just, it, it just light beams up to a satellite and then beams us down wherever we got to go? I'm into that. Rainbow, rainbow leap. Yeah. Bye, Frost. Mm -hmm. By far. So that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> Pretty much. What yeah. trip, man. And the teleports. Or it does like the, uh, the barn doors wipe. We're just driving and all of a sudden the cart <laughs> disappears on one side and just reappears wherever it is. You were at Episidium. Oh, I like that better. Oh, the flash of light. The helpers. <laughs> well, 
of the let's get the cart to the cart shop and uh, get the armor plating installed put metal on our cart now please <laughs> Slightly, down a bag of gold. <laughs> yes, slightly intimidated, the Helper's Hand Guild uh, begin to make the modifications to your cart, which will take a day for them to do. Oh, cool. Bing, 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 bing. I'm, uh, well, I could uh, I could keep noodling around with your. Uh, your dagger, that's not a euphemism, uh, <laughs> Jimmy. That, uh, that Eel. would be awesome. I, I'm gonna hand it to you. So, so when I last whip it out, the last thing I did was I just I just put like a like a key fob on it, right? I just put the eye of one of those yeah. lizards on it. <laughs> yeah. This is like an ongoing project, Jason. I'm trying to make his dagger cooler. I like it. Should I just... Uh, what uh, like what modification are you trying to do? That's a good question. Do I think I can do anything that would imbue this with some sort of like magical power of some kind? I have gym lizard. I have needle teeth from the same lizards. I got Valowex fangs. I got Gulper behemoth fangs. I got plain old bone shards. I got ghost boar tusks. I got a, <laughs> I got a ch chicancore beak and a chicancore clone organ. That's the side of Jimmy's uh, special non-decomposing chest. Here's and I've thing. got a small Blair Witch fetish of myself made by Cherry. <laughs> oh yeah, I got, and I got a chunk of flesh from a smoldering locust, a uh, face of side of vocal cords, a hoof from a ghost boar. So We're here's... just spreading out all this awful viscera <laughs> on the table. Ooh, we could use some of this. This is like a Breath of the Wild, just slapping the still <laughs> shifting and beating organs on the table. Um, here's the thing. Thing. Pick. We won't do just one for all of them, but I would say if any of those sound interesting, any of those animal monster parts, uh, pick one or a couple and give me a uh, check. A history check, a survival check would probably work the best. A nature check would work really well as well. And we'll see if there is, with any particular of those organs, if any of them would provide some benefit by trying to merge them how about weapon. let's 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 see if these ghost boar ghost boar tusks sound like something knifey and that could be boar, magical okay. i was thinking the same thing about for the hoof could i do a, a separate check on my own for the hoof uh hoof of what the ghost boar uh sure both of you give me a check uh, right and it, this is just like a knowledge check right it's not a crafting check with tools. no this is just knowledge check to see like could we do anything with this stuff yes survival it is that's a netty 20. Ooh. Oh, oh boy. shit. For a 29. <laughs> Lincoln's just like, I, I, I don't know. The, they're kind of stabby, I guess. I don't, just puts, <laughs> forces it into his head. <laughs> you, could mount it on, you could mount it on a jaw or, or like a jaw. <laughs> You know, like some kind of tusk or something. <laughs> yeah. You could use it to gore, like, like, with a tusk. <laughs> so first things first, you're gonna get a good boy card. So grab one of those. Lucky duck. And then with that natural twenty check, let me see here. that's that's a fighting style also and that's something i can do i keep forgetting this hold the dagger in one hand and then my hand crossbow in another so i could actually use it when i need to so here's what you can do with this dagger from that check up real. if you <laughs> um if you affix a handle 
crafted from the boar's hoof to use as a handle for the tusk itself. The residual magical energies from the creature will mean that you will have a incorporeal dagger. This is not something I have text for, so you may just want to write this down. Um, as long as it's on your person, Uncle Jimmy, or whomever holds it, you can will for the item to become invisible whenever you want, and then recorporealize or become visible again. Though so you can essentially have it turn invisible at any time. It can also become incorporeal, and you can move it through creatures and objects. Uh, what purpose perhaps. that may have, I don't know, but some utility that could be useful. Who knows? Perhaps it has an increased effect against things that they are themselves incorporeal, like ghosts, boars, ghost boars. <laughs> <laughs> This would count as a just a ma at least just a magical weapon. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, this is a magical weapon, and yeah, we'll 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 say that too. Yes. If if this weapon is used, so this this uh is is like your we'll say this is like a plus one dagger. Nice. And awesome. if you use this against uh, ghostly creatures. And deal damage to them. You'll deal an extra die of damage. Ooh, nice, pretty good. So, with a natty twenty, that gives it quite a few special. Hell yeah, that's amazing. Pretty, pretty cool. Is there any other animal parts you guys want to look at? <laughs> I don't have to. I think I think that's probably cool enough. Yeah, that's that's fair. I'll I'll remove the ghost boar tusks from my inventory and I'll start working on it. I guess. Now it's uh, time to be a pack to the blade warlock. Just change it out. Uh, sleight of hand with leather workers tools. Um, I will say with that natural twenty between the two of you working on this, Lincoln, uh, you do need to spend probably twelve or so hours. Uh, just working on us without expending too much energy. Um, but between the two of you, with you sort of sharpening the tusk and getting it ready, and Uncle Jimmy sort of carving the hoof in the form of a handle, uh, no check needed. You're able to just fashion it. Nice. What shall we name this death dealer that we have created? That's a good Oof. Uh, I had just called it uh, Gulper Behemoth Tooth Dagger originally, so uh, uh, I might have to think on this one for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let me let me hit you with Ghost Fang. Yeah, that's, that's pretty damn good. Spirit Fang, Wraith Fang. Ooh, Wraith Fang, I like that. I like that. Naming things is fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I put the rest of the, the viscera and fucking bone back into my backpack. It's like a it's like a fast food McDonald's bag where like the bottom half of it is just like <laughs> wet and <laughs> gross. It just seemed like reddish brown and <laughs> yeah. dripping slightly. <laughs> All right, cool stuff, cool stuff. Is anybody doing, uh, Discording says Grave Marrow. That's a cool one. Say what? I think we'll cut out. Grave Marrow grave with a weapon. Ooh, I like that too. That's neat. Grave Marrow? Grave Marrow. Done. Interactive Dungeons and Dragons. You can't get it anywhere else, but here on the God Mode channel. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not true. <laughs> you can't get it anywhere else. Anywhere. Only here. Everything is a quick time event. We just stare at the camera until yeah. somebody from chat it. tells us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> what will the party do? What's the matter, trainer? <laughs> All right. Um, so it's going to take a day for you to have the upgrades to the cart and then Kevin if you want to just mark down I think there's probably an area on the 
on the rural stuff along with the harmonic flux and all those on that page where it lists the cart and its upgrades you can go ahead and, and give it that upgrade that's gonna boost its ac and then this is gonna take a day to do so it's just gonna be exactly 24 hours from here and lincoln and uncle jimmy are working fashioning this weapon uh, is anybody doing else during this period of time? You don't have to, I just want to double check. You are at the Helper's Hand Guild, so there is merchants here if you wanted to spend any extra gold on your person, etc. How's the wagon look? It's being repaired currently. We're fixing it now. Well, it's, get, it's, getting, oh, yeah. it's getting upgraded. It's not getting what? fixed up. Oh, you better be fixing it. Forte could be in there either supervising so, or repairing while they attach all the uh, armor plating. Without a check, wagon is looking good. Okay. okay. Maybe He'd still probably be in there trying to supervise and make sure it's done properly. Yeah. Is anyone missing a upgraded weapon? We should have enough to pool our resources together if anybody is. I don't have one, but I also need this one t for my spell casting it's, uh, it's, um, it's staff. Well, uh, see what well, we're, we're getting up what to the how, how much money does everybody have luke is asking this because lincoln is lashing bones together in the corner 519 gold for me and then whatever's Ooh. in the 458, which if I, I'd be willing to help toss a little to uh, anybody who needs upgraded armor or weapons because I've clearly cashed uh, out on this see. guy. Yeah. So, time, so we're, time, so time has 349. Yeah, we're like in the like, if we wanted to, to buy something like a circlet of blasting kind of area now. Okay. And we uh, have almost, almost 500 party gold. Oh, we could get Opie some bracers of archery. There you go. Let's let me let me see here. It's it's 1500, so it'd be a major investment, but I think it'd be worth it. How many bracers. um 15? That's how many Gleedle can I have you guys collected? Uh, it, um, wasn't it four? We, we have the full slots, uh, right? One, two, three, four, we have five, one or two six, extra. Seven. We have seven, we have five slotted, right? Yeah. Do you, okay, so you have at least five individual species. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to remind seven, you, there may be rewards awaiting for you at the, uh, the scuttle shrines as well for collecting, hitting certain uh, collection oh, yeah. marks for the Gleedokin. Mm. If you wanted to stop by there. If if we have time. Correct. We need okay. to we after we sleep we need to head straight towards the boat, so Yeah, that puts you at yeah. three days after a full twenty four hours here. So Kevin, uh if you want to mark, that's gonna be three ticks off the harmonic flux. And then twenty four hours pass as you each sort of awake the next day at the same time here at about one or so uh, light time. So it's still relatively early, early morning. Um, the sounds of folks beginning to wake up after the blight and beginning to reopen their shops and things like that. And whenever you are ready, you can carry on. The wagon is returned to you. The repairs were done securely and professionally. Forte and your wagon has been upgraded. It now has the combat plating on it and looks like it could withstand some extra hits should it find itself in the line of fire. So good. Uh, I, I, I'm putting three. So first of all, Jason, uh, do you agree? I'm following the usual spreadsheet. Do, is Bracers of Archery something that they would have and would it cost 1500 Um... Braces of archery, what's that do? It's a plus two to damage rolls with, with bows and arrows. I, I put the stat block in the chat for you in a, a picture. Using D&D Beyond's technology. Here at the... <laughs> thank you, D&D Beyond. You're so good, D&D Beyond. We love you. Um, 
because you're at the helper's hand guild who probably has the the outside of maybe like epicedium the helper's hand guild probably has the most availability of merchants and things here yes bracers of archery are here and the standard rate that you find in dmg yeah or player's handbook yeah. whichever one. well there ain't shit in the dmg or the player's handbook this is community made oh okay well that, that then there you go yeah um, thanks community yeah Thanks for doing Wizards work for them. Six <laughs> seasons in a movie. Thanks, community. Uh, <laughs> thanks Filling community. in those holes, because there's a lot of them. <laughs> One of two. Uh, all right, so 300 for me, 300 for Tynar. Uh, that's 600. We could do 300 from the party fund. That's that's 900, so we would need 600 more. Um, is, is, is anyone able to help with that? I, I would put some. I can put some in, but could we How much? offhandedly try to do a persuasion to see if we can talk him down at all? Yeah, who's, the, who's the charismatic one? <laughs> uh, OP. Please, sir, can I have some? Can I have these bracelets? I think OP's oddly, plus zero. I don't have any. I'm enough, negative I have, one I have a, Oddly enough, I have a plus five persuasion. <laughs> Let's go. Let's hear it. <laughs> Bring the small child to go buy the good things. You wouldn't deprive the man's last dying wish to buy his son. <laughs> Just during the least of of, so he can protect himself in the future. The world world. We craft the dagger. Tynar tries to bargain with this man. All right. Um, Jimmy and Forte, how much are you in on? Can also pitch in a three hundred or. It's a Z twelve. We need fifteen hundred. Yeah. yeah. Op has money too, right? I guess hypothetically speaking, Op should put in money for this, but we can sure. worry about that next yeah. week. I mean, you uh, you could assume that Op would be down for this since it's going to yeah. benefit everybody. Yeah. I'm assuming that they'll put in two hundred ish. Can, does that mean Jimmy can put in one hundred? Yeah. I'll I'll put in two hundred if somebody wants to take it back. Well, we can just math it out to make it an even split if you yeah. want. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. J Jason, time uh, a fourteen persuasion. Uh, with the fourteen persuasion, the uh, merchant here in the sort of open stall area of the helper's hand go looks to you, Tyne, and then down to Opie, and says, uh, "Well, in fact, no, we're not a charity." Um, we do need to make money. However, you have been customers here before, and I have heard some stories of the work you've done here in the passage. So, I suppose I could cut you a deal and take off 75 gold pieces. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 1425. Alright, so... Lincoln pays 250, Time pays oh. 250, Bart pays 100, OP pays 150, Jimmy pays 150, Forte pays 250, Party pays 250. Sounds good to me. Uh, sure. so, so who's got the party funds marked down? I'll get it. Okay. Thank you. And I will add and attune the Bracers of Archery to OP's <laughs> character sheets. Oh, does the, I was going to ask you, Jason, does the dagger need attunement? Yes. With how much stuff it has, yeah. It'll need okay. attunement. <laughs> With how much shit I put on it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you how much it has, yes. Math is great, isn't it, Kevin? See how fast that came nah, out? Nah, it's paying work. less and we're still paying enough. How's that? Evil. Yeah, that... That'll be a that'll be a pleasant surprise when Opie gets back. We bought you a best in slot item. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Tea sirs, I think this is amazing. Haven't you? Uh, I've noticed over your forearms have been looking awfully cold. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. It's not my birthday, Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Guess I'll have one in the future so it could count. <laughs> Happy almost birthday. Hey, wagon has been upgraded. 
invisible incorporeal dagger crafted. I guess I guess now we can take our long rest and yeah. rush to the bone zone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll say that this twenty-four hour period after you get done crafting the dagger, uh, each of you can also then take a long rest. So let me. Um, actually, your tokens are here on the board. You can you may need to update the HP on them uh, since you had a level up. But go ahead and use the. Use the tokens that are here on the map. Let me actually shift over. Hang on, hang on. Oh, oh, oh. All right, let me shift over here. Go ahead and upgrade these tokens that are on the far right, and then we'll use these going forward. These are usually the, the ones that I draw from a lot. Uh-huh. Let me yes. add that plus one that I definitely have. <laughs> I do have it. Okay, sussy. Why you say it so sussy, sussy? You know, Long adds to the charm. Rest taken. Cool. Nice. How, how many hit points you at for take? 83. 80, Good 83 Lord. hit points now. Good Lord. Resilient constitution has been added with hill dwarf racial for getting an extra HP per level. Carry the two. Lincoln feels like now, once per day, he can stab people a lot more. <laughs> like, like, twice more, he can stab people. Over a 24-hour period, <laughs> I can get two more stabs in. I mean, that's the most mild way to describe action surge, but it is what it essentially is. is Double stab. <laughs> <laughs> you dig deep and spend all your energy oh i'm gonna be that guy uh do we have to pay to stay here i can't remember um if you're staying here yes everyone five gold deposit box got it this time all that wait did we we did leave i was gonna say that's why we were staying the night at the other place because it was free <laughs> No. This, it's fine. This is more efficient. How much you said? Yeah. Three gold? Five, Five. gold apiece. Uh, uh, Lincoln, I will pay for you. Oh, thank you. But the least I could do for your help. Go ours. All right, team. What's the plan now? Straight to Karnak. All right, traveling to Karnak. As you all load up in the wagon, getting ready to head that way, yeah, I'm going to nice. ask you to please ping me. Ping us. Ping us. You Can shift we just take out. The same, same track that we went, or are no, we going to try it? Okay. No, different. No. Okay, moving here instead. Oh, so, so first off, nothing happens here as you shift here. Uh, that's going to be your second trek of five hexes moving at a normal pace that you can go in a day. Uh, so it's going to be two, four hours pass. So okay. let's going to move it. One, two, three, four. All right, so another um, mark off the harmonic flux, Kevino. Uh, ping me. I'm assuming you're moving here in the hexes that have not been discovered yet. Correct. Okay, you shift here. That's another bit off the harmonic flux coven here. As you all move here, uh, up ahead through the muck and the mire of what looks like sort of a mangrove field, you notice a glittering ambient glow amongst the trees. As you take a second to perceive what is in the mangrove forest, you notice it is a Gleedalkin. You can make me either a animal handling, a stealth, or a sleight of hand check in order to try and procure this one. I could give uh, someone a bonus to any of those. I have a plus seven to sleight of hand and I can talk to it. I have a plus... I have a plus eight animal handling. Ooh. I get a plus plus ten on sleight of hand. <laughs> well, jeez, jeez. <laughs> well, I could I could still talk to it. 
Yeah, Le Lincoln just moves behind Jimmy, making cicada noises the whole time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's doing, you're doing the exact same clicking with your bones. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have advantage since he's helping me? Uh, no, this is going to be a straight roll. I still can't speak with animals. <laughs> that's a wow. natural two plus ten, so that's twelve. I'll add uh, in uh, a plus one. Sure. So with a thirteen, with uh, Lincoln towering behind you as you push through the forest, you're able to get up close to the Gleedalkin, who is crawling on one of the long stalks that sort of sits out of the murky swamp waters of one of the mangrove trees' roots, and you get close enough, not scaring the small creature yet and as you go to flick out one of your sort of elongated uh, bugbear arms in order to use your sleight of hand to nab the thing uh, it gets sort of caught in two of the branches of the mangrove as you watch as the gleedokin uh, quickly begins to flitter away this one is uh, make a check to try one more time mm, no this one unfortunately gets away a good attempt. That's right. Yeah, I'm right. sorry. I, uh, my uh, arms are a little uh, long. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. My apologies. It's oh, fine. The wrong and heavy like mom's spaghetti. <laughs> Making my knees weak. I'm regretting. There are plenty more keep little kin in the forest. <laughs> All right. We move on. Ping me! I'm assuming just moving ahead. Yeah, Whoop. you know it. Two more hours pass. Uh, let's see here. Nothing happens here. I am shifting ahead one more. Go ahead and mark that one off. Another harmonic flux drop, Kevino. One more. Bringing you to 11. Light time, you can see the Gleedokin up in the sky, slowly beginning to disperse as you know Blight time is heading its way here. You've moved five hexes. You've moved 30 uh, miles traversing through the swamp with the help of Opie to keep you from having to get caught in the stickiness of the, the nasty uh, kind of mire here that is this area. But... Unless you push yourselves, you'll need to rest here. It doesn't seem like it's. we'd have to push ourselves like three times to get there tonight, so I'd say we yeah. just rest. Agreed. Sure, sure, sure. All right, so finding what sort of solid ground you can to keep out of the nasty swamp waters. Um, go ahead, everyone, and as you settle down for the night, you traveled five spaces, that is 10 hours, meaning you'll have to spend, uh, you'll have to let an entire day process. So that's gonna be an additional um, 12 hours. So that is going to push you through blight time. Quite literally at the tail end of blight time. right as the sun is about to rise. Uh, that's going to be three more ticks off the harmonic flux, Kevin. And I need a constitution saving throw from everyone. I'm assuming you're all posted up in your tents. Whoop. Yeah. Never constitution saving throw, you say? Correct. Never, never happened before. Making things up. He's fine. Lincoln's fine. Bark fine. Tyne fine. Tyne fine. fine. Rolling for Opie. That's a uh, ten. I can add a plus one if need be. Uh, Uncle Jimmy fine. And then, did we get one for Opie? Nose goes for Opie. Or I guess I'm going. Okay. <laughs> I was the first one to not do it. Oh, Three. Excellent. This is on all of you. Uh, this does, is it on me. Does Opie have I'm any form of uh, Does Opie have any form of plus to its constitution? Uh, uh, it's not. it's probably not a plus two, but I'll double check just in case. Uh, just in case. <laughs> Otherwise, Opie has exhaustion as Opie sort of like 
I've got the I've got the black lung, Mr. Lake. <laughs> oh no, he does have a plus two. Hey, okay. Oh, oh, five. Oh, be fine then. Nice. This is my home, Mr. Lincoln. I'm okay. <laughs> this is like a bit of slime dribbles out the corner of his mouth. <laughs> All right. As a, a new day is about to dawn here, you may continue to press forward. Ping me. May also, well just go straight there. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Jimmy, Aww. please give me a survival check. As Although it is turning light time here, you do have to traverse at least one hour in darkness, so you don't want to get lost. It's no problem. Can, can I assist him with that by sitting shotgun, like I normally do? Uh, sure. Maybe advantage him. That's a 23 instead. Right, Thank you. You are fine. <laughs> Roll a 2 and a 3 with a plus 9 and a plus 2. <laughs> Crazy. That does put you at 1 light time. So now, the Gleedle can begin to gather in the sky, and you no longer have to traverse in the darkness of the Blight. Um, here as you're pushing through the muck and the mire, there is a heavy cloud of uh, mosquitoes that are annoying and bite at each of you as you push through. Please give me, everyone, a constitution saving throw, please. I'll be, don't you have, don't you have, don't, don't you hold domain with these flies? They're not, they're not, uh, fireflies, they're mosquitoes. Ah. I'll roll one for Opie. Thank you. Oh no, that's a six. <laughs> this is all everyone else's fault. Except <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> our responsibility. <laughs> I was gonna come back. He's gonna have new bracers, but he's gonna have two broken legs. And... <laughs> okay, so we got you bracers and malaria. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good metal band. Oh, that's all right. How are you yellow? How are you yellow fever shots? <laughs> I think that's everybody, right? It's Jason yeah. rolling damage for Opie for the for the <laughs> septic <laughs> malaria. Um. Okay. Let me see here in <laughs> just a second. Hopefully, Opie's mom is on antibiotics. <clears throat> if I failed that, I was going to argue so hard that mosquitoes <laughs> wouldn't bother with me. You have no fucking idea how much I would have medicated that. <laughs> <laughs> but I rolled a 21, so it's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, good stuff. Let's continue the trip. Oh, really? Opie, Opie didn't get malaria. That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, just just go straight there. Okay, it's going to be another tick off the harmonic flux, Kivina, that p puts you at three light time. As you're traversing, getting closer and closer to Karnak, the home of the Blightners, um, everyone watches as... Opie is sort of just rambling on as he sometimes does about his family and stuff like that before he begins to slowly laugh harder and harder. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> and then the flies, you know, there's so many mosquitoes and all kinds of bugs. And my mom was like, don't go there. But I did. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Is Opie all right? Are you feeling well, boy? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Time? Did you have something to do with this? Nah. I have not shared any with the boy. We... Uh, detect poison and disease, please. Right. You could have do time. that as a, you could do that as a ritual. It's only two yeah. minutes. Do, do we have time for that? Uh, you can. But first, everyone, give me one more Constitution saving throw, please. Ah, fuck. Even OP. Oh, uh, except OP. Oh, that's better. Oh, no. I have saved. I'm Im I am immune to disease, though, so. I was going to say. Can it, I, can, no, I was going to roll a medicine. I can roll a medicine on OP, too. I have a plus eight. 
What's the spell for cure disease? I've never needed it because I've always had a paladin at the party. Um, all right. Tyne, you begin to go check Opie. Opie, despite saying that he is fine, looks a little exhausted. He has one level of exhaustion. And I see oh, some no. bags under his eyes. He's got a little bit of cough. You're also able to uh, get the sense using this medicine check that Opie has come under the effects of a disease known as the cackle fever. <laughs> the cackle fever. Uh, he's, he, got, he's got the cack. You'll want to try and keep some distance with Opie because this is a contagious thing. Uh, and Opie will remain exhausted until his disease has been cured. Come here, boy. I have a potion for this. Oh! Yeah, just... Just... I, Put some I, tussin on it. I can, uh, yeah, oh. I, I can carry the potion between Professor Bark and Opie. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm that's immune, fair. I'm immune to disease, so. It's, yeah. it, I'm it's like flavoring it. rest, lesser restoration as, I know lesser restoration, that's what I was saying as the potion. Yeah, oh, like cool. Three people know it in oh. the party. Yeah, oh, damn, yeah. we're, we're covered there. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, classic, classic case of the uh, giggle fits. Uh, uh, yes. uh, Opie slurps uh, this concoction you made, Professor Bart, flavoring it as your lesser restoration and uh, wiping his mouth. Uh, you see the bags under his eyes begin to slowly dissipate as he continues to trek along with you all and says, I don't know why I was laughing so hard. I don't know the stories <laughs> were that particularly funny. It's all right, son. Sometimes when you're on the road and uh, get a little bit punch drunk and it's just a little bit wary. What's punch drunk, no. Mr. Forte? Kind of when you know your brain gets a little bit crazy. You think everything is funny because you're exhausted and or bored or going insane from doing the same thing over and over again. Oh, okay. One time I saw a man laugh so hard he suffocated and died. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, Lincoln doesn't elaborate. <laughs> we can hear a stiff wind blow after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> There's a crow in the back. Yeah, no one says anything. Just everyone <laughs> continues to walk in silence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the cricket. Gosh. Uh, one, two. Okay, uh, with that, Opie's taken care of. You can move one more space. Uh, shifting nice. over to Karnak. That's three spaces, two more before you need to rest, technically. But Karnak. with that, you press towards Karnak. I say we enter through the main gates. They know what we're capable of. Yes, I'm not going to be forced out through a hole in the wall. Here on official business, let's break it. it. Is, <laughs> it door shaped, I mean, you know what I mean. As we head up there, um, I'm gonna take one of the like lanterns on the cart and like wave it to not be as inconspicuous to let them know we're coming up there, so they don't try to like blast us as we come up there. Hello in the house. <laughs> it's it's like going up a driveway in the south. You gotta let them know that you're there. <laughs> yeah, as you all approach, <laughs> waving a torch just to signify to those at Karnak that you are approaching. Uh, you do see several of the cloaked uh, Blightners who are standing at the entrance of uh, somewhat... Um, it's a it's this massive large skull, but it has a couple cracks and things in it where it didn't before, but likely from your previous bout to visit this area here. Um, Moonbeam. As you step up, uh, they hold their hands up and say, Hold here, give us a moment. And they disappear be between two bony door entrances. A few minutes pass, and Grim Accord begins to step out. Oh, so he's he's coming out of Karnak? We're not going inside? Mm. Uh, correct. Oh, correct. Excellent. Seems like it. Yep, yep, yep. That's fine. He looks to each of you and says, So, the prodigal party returns. I hope you have made good on our agreement. Of course. We don't fail twice. Or three times. <laughs> In this case. 
we don't fail twice, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> so then, this creature you felled, I assume it didn't give you too much trouble. Mm. I suppose not. We came prepared. And your man helped a little bit too, I suppose. Good. He holds out a fingerless gloved hand and kind of runs his uh, longer nailed uh, black painted fingers his way and says, may I see the flask then? Uh, like it'll stand a good like, like 10 feet away from him and kind of like dangle it in front of him and kind of shake it. Now, we do need some assurances. We want to know more about these shadow wells. Well, that's the thing, you see. There are no more shadow wells. This was going to be the first of its kind. That wasn't until you destroyed it. Of course. And the soul. It should be enough for just one shadow well? Hmm. Not a soul. Rather, the shadow of a creature. Uh, normally, just a shadow. Everyone has one. But, uh, let's say, um, my particular arts in the field of shadow energies and manipulation uh, means that I have some means to give these shadows more than what they are. They are shadow energy, but most laymen simply see them as uh, abstraction, a blot as the sun hits their bodies or light. I see it as something more and use it, manipulate it, to control the energies. The flask that you currently dangle in front of you is of my own making, an item an artifact, if you will, that should a creature be felled for whatever reason, its shadow, instead of simply staying where it's at, could be procured. The larger the shadow, the more shadow energy it would provide, or negative energy, there are many names for it. If this creature, from what you described previously, was as large and formidable as you say, then it is likely not the case that this will be enough, but it will be a great start in terms of establishing a new well. I see. What do you guys want to talk to this guy about? We, I imagine we would have talked to each other on the way here. But, yeah. uh... Because, here's the thing. We now know that we're probably going to die if we open the last, the last one. Mm-hmm. It's gonna, it's gonna flood the valley with light, which is ostensibly a good thing, but we don't a hundred percent know if it's a good thing. I wonder if we can ask him if there's a way that we could balance things out a little more, and maybe spare our lives in the process. Maybe if we approach the last well with a certain amount of shadowy energy to balance things out. I don't know. I appreciate the thought, but I think that they are both damaging and they don't necessarily negating effects. Mm. I think we might die with cancer and emphysema. <laughs> Brutal. Um, <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, checks on that in like speculation if that tracks or uh it's you be can, something fundamental to these magics right uh you you could make a check although it'd be difficult to tell these are sort of abstractions you you don't have confirmed information on how they fully work but you could try to make a check well, it'd be tough well 
I might make an argument that I that Bark has spent his life kind of studying exactly the hurt, hurtful and healing effects of commonplace things of magics and stuff like that, magical pieces of uh, plants and animals and stuff. So, if anybody would know that they're either canceling or doing damage, no matter what, I think he may be one of those guys. So. That okay. being said. I mean, that's that's a fair assessment, sure. Uh, could we do a uh, oh shit insight? Can I talk you into insight? Well, I guess here's my question: What exactly would you be trying to learn with this, Jack? That if we release this dark magic, that it is exactly going um like either heal us or counteract the light rather than introduce more bad. Um, okay, yeah, you can make a check on that. Insight probably wouldn't work as well unless you're trying to read Grim Accord. You'd probably want to do like a yeah. nature, history, even an arcana check would work with this. Could I give nature him advantage on nature? Yeah. If you're trained in it, sure. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. Trained, in, trained in proficient, go for it. Yeah, 19. I'll make it 20 with a plus one. All right. Professor Bark, from what you saw of the, let's say, temporary shadow well versus the radiant wells that the Helper's Hand Guild either set up or maybe just maintains, Professor Bark, from what you can tell, the shadow wells simply do the opposite effect of radiant wells. They are a tap, a portal, a gateway, a connection to the realm or plane of negative energy, um, which is usually associated with death or destruction or unlife. You would assume that Grim Accord is probably hoping to set one up in order to maintain some form of balance with the variety of radiant wells that exist, considering that, as he has at least stated, there are no shadow wells. All right, so I guess, yeah. You could ask him maybe so, like... So does it stand to reason that it is adding more danger, not healing light? It's difficult to tell because yes, uh, shadow well negative energy is like necrotic energy. It is very bad immediately to a person, unless you're undead. Some creatures could probably benefit from it. Um, but yes, certainly more dangerous uh, on the on the surface level. But you spend enough time now, especially with some of the information you've gathered from the helper's hand, to know that radiant wells aren't the safest things either. So, yeah, it's a little hard to tell. Well, Lincoln, I like the theory, but often in times, this seems like we are tasking this body, this planet, with another wound to heal. Maybe a lesser wound, but another wound the same. And what do you suggest that we do? Well, we have done our part. It was to save ourselves. We have delayed their plans. I say we drop, we drop. We give them this, we can give them this potion and then make it the task of our, uh, whoever follows us to deal with the wells that may appear. Mm. Indeed. I think regardless, we should relinquish the shadow of this creature. I think we have little choice in that, unfortunately. All right, fast forward back to where we were. Um, uh, Lincoln steps forward a little bit and says, this is a fascinating device. Do you perhaps have more of them? Hmm, curious question. What would you seek to do if I had more? We still have much to learn about the Radiant Wells. But one thing we know for certain is it is killing us, this task. 
the radiance, the positive energy is taking its toll on our bodies. If that perhaps we could find a way to counteract this with a negative form of energy, perhaps some of us may walk away from the culmination of our final task. Jimmy's going to look to Grimacord and put the ghost dagger um, on his <laughs> finger, Thanos style, and see. Look at this. You see this? Perfectly fucking balanced, am I right? Yeah, it's it perfectly balanced, and it's going to just tip over because one side is just a giant fucking tooth and fall on the ground. That's uh, kind of what I'm imagining right now with uh, all them light wells up and. Uh, you not even having a shadow. I, I'm assuming that this big area, like you were saying, uh, the, the perfect balance of everything, if I could reach to ask your opinion on this, say there's one or two shadow wells and, you know, a couple light open, do you think that uh, would uh, make a better balance here long term? Or is it uh, you're seeking just to uh, pop about 30 of these things and... Uh, you know, no more light. I wasn't even going that far. I was just trying to get us not to die. His name is Grim Accord. I'm sure that means dark reckoning to some degree. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd like to live in this too, but I'm just curious if, uh, you know. Well, I won't lie to you. I would love to be bequeathed with more powerful shadows using the artifact that you use to pull in <laughs> the shadow you currently obtain. However, if you are thinking that in some way this negative energy will undo the damage that has been done to your current forms from the Radiant Wells, you would be incorrect. It's less that it would undo the current damage, but perhaps prevent further damage. We have one well remaining, the final well. Mm. This is a way to stave off the inevitable. And perhaps there would be something in it for you as well. If we lived. An interesting thought, he says, and his face, usually with a bit of a smirk, actually begins to think for a second as he kind of, his eyes scan around past you. I oh. hope he starts laughing uncomfortably. <laughs> oh god, I hate it. There are powerful creatures besides the one that you encountered in Episidium that roam the regions. There is said to be one in each. If you find some way of encountering the creature or whatever form it, this thing may take in each region and kill it, if you would agree to it, I would allow you to have another empty flask of mine with the same arcane abilities. If you bring it back to me, this could be of mutual benefit. I could use some of the energies to continue building the well here at Karnak, but I could also use some of the power to form some, perhaps, protective field over you for what is to come. The immediate effects would certainly be harmful to you all, but the long-term effects could potentially mean that you stave off a uninteresting and unearned early death. Well, I think that we may have a deal. You give us an empty flask, and when our business is complete, I will return the flask to you. What do you say? Before I agree, you asked me a question, he says looking at you, Uncle Jimmy. 
Yeah. I think the answer you're looking for is for me to say that I seek perfect equilibrium within the valley. But the truth is, is I think that the light in the valley has gone on for long enough. There are many radiant wells, but no negative or shadow wells. And I think that this uneven balance is uh, discriminatory of certain peoples and creatures within the valley. I would seek to provide a longer night. Not a permanent night, mind you. But I think the time of the Radiant Wells should perhaps tack a backseat for a while. Fine, then. Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln, uh, extends his hand and hands, hands the filled flask to him. Our original bargain. He takes the pearlescent flask and just slowly pulls the cork up just maybe half an inch and you see as he brings it up to his nose and he breathes in. Oof. You were not lying. Formidable. I... Could I take a perception check on him to see if there's any note of any vestments, garb, holy symbol, anything of who or what he may pray or worship to? Uh, sure. If he has one. That's a 16. Uh, with a 16, Uncle Jimmy, you don't notice any visible symbol of anything he may worship or be a part of other than the symbol of the Blightners on his uh, cloak to the side. However, his mannerisms and the general makeup of how he looks gives you the sense that Grim Accord is likely Bay. <laughs> well then do we have a deal you give us an empty flask and then when our business is concluded we return the flask to you if you are able to find other powerful creatures out there kill them and use one of my empty flasks or shadow flask to consume the shadows of the creature Yes, return to me. I will admittedly use some of the energies to continue to finalize the shadow well here, but I could also perhaps manipulate the energies and when you need to, call upon the flask that one of you will hold on your person to enact a, for lack of a better term, a shadow shield to perhaps, at least for a certain period of time, buffet you from the caustic energies of the Radiant Wells. Find this acceptable. That's how I feel about that. He takes the flask that you gave him, like, and opens up his uh, cloak and sifts it inside, and then pulls out another flask and hands it to you hold this on you should you come across the dangerous creatures in the regions perhaps see them to an end take their shadows and return to me perhaps yes I think you have a meeting soon don't you um you know about that, then? Mm. Yes, that's correct. Are you a member of this lodge? <laughs> no. Mm. <laughs> I used to run in the House Dreadmore circles, but let's say I decided to go my own path. I see. Well, yes, we do have an appointment. But our business here in the swamp is not yet concluded. 
Some of you may hold your suspicions of my activities. But I can promise you, Lincoln, and the rest of you, go to House Dreadmore. The insight you gather from my sisters may shed some light on exactly what I'm attempting to solve as a problem here in the passage. <laughs> or she had some shadow. Whoa! Really? Sometimes I wish I was playing a goofier character. Uh, uh, Lincoln takes the flask and he... Yeah, there we go. Lincoln takes the flask and he, he, he slides it into his rope. Um, it says, very well. May our paths cross again. And if we oh, fail in our task, you know where to retrieve the flask from. The final well. Yes. You'll learn about that at Hell's Dreadmore as well. Oh, uh, if I could, one other question real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, Lincoln, what, what's the name of that uh, schmuck that's been following us? That uh, Why did dwarf? you ask me? I don't remember. Why did you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> the dwarf? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what was his name again? Balls. I look over to him and mention that name. You know that guy? I know of him, yes. Working with you? No. Inside check. Unaffiliated. I don't believe him. 18. Sounds like he's being honest. Okay. Just wanted to ask. Thank you. Vals works for an unknown contractor. I have heard through the grapevine that they are powerful. But Vals and his um, peons know not to shed, pop their heads in our air. So, no, I don't know much about him beyond that. Hey, you hear that, guys? That means we're not going to run into him at the House Dreadmore. Hey. That's good news. <laughs> but could possibly go wrong. Well, then. I, I appreciate this you concludes. finalizing this deal. It is good that you did such a thing. I would have hated to have seen the result. Though I would have at least had six more shadow which to use. Luckily you followed on your end of the bargain. Cutting it a little close, but you still fulfilled it nonetheless. As I said before, go to House Dreadmore. You'll learn more there. I appreciate what my sisters are attempting to do. But I don't like bargaining chips. And I don't like those that use them. <laughs> They're going to cure my blindness. This is probably the first, the most open Lincoln has been with the purpose of going to House Dreadmore since he mentioned it for the rest of the party. You can't see? <laughs> he's, he's still wearing a blindfold. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> well, very good for them. And good for you. Yes, good for me. Goodbye, Grim. I'm sure we will see each other again. I don't know. But if we do, then I hope you will return with a shadow. Mm, perhaps. Well then, ta ta. Ta ta. <laughs> what does this mean? What he said? An archaic form of saying goodbye. Mm. He kicks ta -ta. a turn. He'll turn back and begins to march along with several other blightners back inside of the gates with the large bottom open mouth between two teeth of the skull and the doors come to a close. Mm. I can feel enmity coming from the rest of you. You think I've made a mistake? Yes, well... There's time to discover if it's a mistake or a brilliant stroke. We don't know yet. It could be 
But you're saving us all. Well, I did say I would return the flask to him. He was the only one that implied it had to be filled. <laughs> I just said I would return the flask to him. Is that one of them there, uh, fey bargains you just made? Mm, we didn't get it in writing, so it's a little murky. <laughs> I think it would hold up, but then again, he probably would say the opposite. Well, I appreciate what you did. I, uh, as much as I, uh, would love to be a martyr for a land that I do not live in or hold any home to, I'd like to walk out of this. I think we should go to House Dreadmore after we deal with the dude. <laughs> yes, I thought this was something to do with your own personal history. I didn't realize. Yes. I'm here as a peace offering, and if I can bring peace between the light and the dark, I suppose that fulfills my purpose, does it? Well, then, this is getting more and more interesting the more and more we've been here. Also, I, I, I've, I've met one of his sisters, I think. He, they seem much nicer. <laughs> what, what is happening? Yes, Granny Bones, I think her name was. <laughs> old, old Mama Bones. Old Mama Bones, old yes. Mama Bones. She was very nice. I think you'll like them more than Grim Accord as well. I think you'll all like them. Forever. Forever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> now then, let's go help some dudes out with that problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the lich be getting on my dudes. <laughs> Uh, you know the old saying, dudes before liches. Yeah. They get stitches. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean. Hey. Hey. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so we'll help some dudes. Don't know. We're adults. We are. Fun. All right, so um, we're gonna help dudes. Where was dudes? I think it was. It was it's that's right. We should we should stop at the scuttle shrine yeah. on the way. Ah. Good idea. You know what? That cuts a pretty good jib. I'm into this. It's right along the path that we need to take. Let's do it. I'm hoping we get a javelin of light. <laughs> I, I say that only because I was looking at everything in the same category as circlet of blasting. I was like, oh, we got a circlet of blasting last time. <laughs> Let's. Let's fucking go. Go <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three. You got two more spaces to move. You shift here. It's two more hours off. Oh. Okay, nothing happens here. Move me again. Ping me. Let's go to the Actually, yeah, yeah, you're right. Shifting here. It's all right. Look right anyways. And that's going to be another tick off the harmonic flux, Kevino. And it is here that you would need to settle down to rest, unless you want to push yourself. Let's do it. Same deal as last time. Too far to push. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Opie's already exhausted, so. Oh, okay, yeah, good point. I hear I'm sleepy, but there's... Um, that sleep. was from the disease, so since you cured it, Opie's no uh, longer exhausted. Oh. Yeah, still may as well settle down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, settling down. That's going to take uh, 12 hours off the ticker. So that's going to push you to exactly. That was 10 hours. This needs to be 12. So that's going to sling you right on around over to seven blight time. That's going to be three more ticks off the harmonic flux, Kevin. <laughs> It's really the conversation with Gerba Cord that got me tired. 
you know, just men <laughs> pondering the mental swing between polarities of consciousness, you know, dark and light, <laughs> what is good, what is bad, it really kind of takes its toll on a little froggy brain. <laughs> and everybody give me that constitution saving throw, you wake up in the morning. God's eye. I'll roll from Opie's sheet. I rolled advantage that didn't need to happen. 23 anyways. 14. 14. Nice. Good rolls all around. I mean, what is it to be a good person, Mr. Lincoln? Is it something that's inspired from in within or from without? I just remember Domo's response to that. The strongest fucker is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones that are right. <laughs> Lincoln would probably say he doesn't know what makes a good person. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I'll go to the bed now. Opie, Opie! Opie, Opie! That's so stupid. <clears throat> <laughs> Opie's poison ground type. Oh. <laughs> yes. Ooh, poison dart frog. 2.0. Ah, uh, hang on just a second. Lincoln's just ghost. The crow gunk. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, crow gunk, not a crow toxic crow. Crow gunk and, and dust time. skull. And bark and time. Oh, grass, baby. I think it could be a dust noir. Oh, yeah, may, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe dark ghost. Yeah. Considering he vomits whenever there's sunlight. T right. Time is definitely fire and grass. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was thinking air, but that that's better. Or flying, I guess. <laughs> Here's a hello. All right. Um, yeah, everyone's fine as they wake up in the morning. Uh, it is blight time outside, so you'll need to throw something out there to keep things lit. Uh, but you can continue to press forward uh, with now four, five more days of travel. Go ahead and ping me. Keeping it lit. I'm keeping it lit. Don't you, you worry. Shift don't here. <laughs> <laughs> totally lit. I hurt my back. I wish I were dead. <laughs> In Minecraft. Minecraft. Oh, uh, we're going to that one. Yeah. You said survival check, yes? Uh, give me a survival check, yes, at advantage. There we go, 20. Nice. Nice. Uh, very nice, okay. As you push here, there is a dense, um... There is, a an actual area a pocket where the the swamp grounds becomes sort of flat terrain that you can traverse across but it's very dusty here as the wagon kicks up dust uh, everybody make me a constitution saving throw oh shit <laughs> this is a bad weather effect oh we have oh no that's hurt oh no oh me no oh we just having a bad time if it uh, needs it, I'll throw a plus one to get a 12. Uh, let me see here. Hang on just a second. You're not supposed to know if it needs it or not. You're yeah, supposed I can't, to decide. I can't tell you. Do you want to just add it or no? Uh, I, I'll use my good boy. And that gives me a advantage on it. Sure. Again, not right, but sure. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you said con, yes? Yes. Thing you you rolled just now. <laughs> just making sure. All right, yeah, that's um, a twenty-one. All right, Professor Bark and Opie. The <laughs> dust kind of gets in your faces. You cough a little bit and have coughing fits. You both of you are exhausted. One point. It kind of reminds me of one of my dreams last night. I thought we were all that thing in the wind. I bet you all wish you didn't need to breathe right now. <laughs> uh, ping me. That's what I constantly wish with their... <laughs> Oh my god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, I hope he's falling in love and giving in to existential aches every time you just got oh, 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 be with that millennial humor. Jeez. <laughs> uh, nothing happens here. You can move again. To the shrine. 
of the silver monkey. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move here. That's gonna be one more tick. Um, and then give me uh, some survival check. Give me uh, two survival checks at advantage, Uncle Jimmy. That's another tick off the harmonic flux, Kevin, and you are just about at light time, everybody. It's uh, 25 on the first. All right, that one's fine. Make sure you can get here without getting lost or anything like that. 17. Uh, still okay. And with that, you're able to make your way to the Scuttle Shrine. As you make your way here to the Cuddle, Scuttle Shrine, it is a uh, large structure, sort of built almost like a, a barn or a temple or a chapel, if you will. Um, carved in wood are the shapes of several different insect families that sort of adorn the front. Uh, two what look like insect-like creatures, as you uh, were able to determine before, Thrycream who sit with legs crossed at the entrance. Uh, they look to you, and seeing as you pull up in your wagon, they both just turn and with one of their several arms uh, move their hands towards the open entrance. There's no actual doors here in front of this um, uh, structure. You're able to just walk in. We have acquired Gleedleken. Uh, there is a member who looks more humanoid and their face is covered by a mask in the style of a beetle that uh, covers their face uh, their hair pulled back sticking up with a ponytail a short ponytail in the back as they step over um, she looks and says you've acquired more of the species uh, how many in total <laughs> Yes, me. Yes, me. Seven. Seven. Seven in, uh, individual ones. Okay. Yes. Now these these are all different species or families, correct? Not just seven so. collected total. Like we don't have any duplicates. I don't, I don't know of any duplicates that we have. Okay. In that case, hang on just a second. The go to here. my to my god bible all bibles are god bibles jason <laughs> um <laughs> what would you say the the light javelin i think it's on there the attendant what? looks at the gleedokin as you show each to her and says fascinating may i hold them i, I guess i guess <laughs> to the rest of the crew. Is it normally is it normally cool to share beetles? <laughs> uh, she extends two of her arms, and almost naturally, the Gleedlekin pull themselves out of your grasp, like, and begin to crawl on the arms of the attendant. Uh, they, they crawl tickle. closer up to her shoulder. She turns, seems to whisper something, and then turns back to you. Beautiful creatures. I appreciate you taking care of these and sharing them with us. You've done well. We have blessings for your group, if you would permit it. Yes. She begins to hand them back to you and then waves a thrycreen, tall, reaching almost eight foot, steps up and holds a stone, uh, what looks like case and sets it down on one of the nearby tables in the temple here and pulls it open. The attendant grasps and holds up what looks like a piece of what appears to be uh, maybe like a insect hide or, or um, chitin and says here for you. She says if you're able to adorn this piece to a weapon or armor it will enhance it. Uh, this basically serves as a plus one enhancement. You Ooh, can put nice. on a weapon or armor piece. Oh shit, we can put it on an armor piece? That's that's, that's big? That's really good. What, what, uh, give it to fucking Forte. Give it yeah. to our sturdy boy. 
Say, Forte or Lincoln, if you're not getting... Oh, we're going to get your eyes fixed, aren't we? Yeah, so I, I, I can throw daggers soon. You've got if... in the morning. <clears throat> yeah, right, right, right. You don't have a plus one from your forage cleric stuff, do you? I have a plus one uh, on my armor right now from my forage domain. Oh! Awesome. So you could, could technically plus one my shield. Does that work? I guess it would. I don't see why it would. Could plus one if we allow helmets. No. Do you have a plus one weapon? You have the star fall from the meteorite. Oh, that's right. I was going to say moving one of them, but I think it would work on the shield. Put it on the shield. Yeah. He also pulls out another item. This one is it. It looks like a, a curved branch from some type of tree with a mixture of purple pinkish um, leaves that come off it a bit and as she pulls it up grabbing it almost like a, a curved handle attached through a mixture of webbing appears to be what looks like a cocoon like um, object that gives this soft ambient pink glow as she turns you and says and for collecting six something that each of you can have and I hope it provides some benefit the silk spun lantern Ooh. Ooh. oh this looks cool this enchanting lantern stirs a deep fascination in the hearts of those who behold it and can be used to lure unsuspecting humanoids weak-willed creatures who so much as glance at its mesmerizing lilac hues find themselves haunted by wistful memories of its light and a desire to be near it you can use it as a night light, and you can also use the Eclipse Swarm. By holding this lantern, you can cast Whoa. the Insect Plague spell. When cast in this way, the spell creates moths instead of locusts. Once this property of the lantern has been used, can't be used again until dawn. That's cool. That's dope. Uh, this is under your player belongings. You need to see it. Hey. Nice. Just gonna look to Lincoln. You know you could get one of those uh, tusks or horns and just put it on your head and then adorn that and look like one of them fish things. Mm. You just lure people in and stab the shit out of them. That you know? would be pretty cool. Also, my dagger can talk to it because they're both moths, technically. <laughs> That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. I like it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll hold on. I, I would say Opie should have this, but Opie just got bracers and he's not here right now, so Lake is going <laughs> to take it. <laughs> That's his fault. Yeah, there you go. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for sharing the Lidokin that you've obtained. Should you find yourselves obtaining more, the next collection goal, if you will, would be eight. We could provide more benefits and blessings uh -huh. to you. Damn, we were running off. Jimmy, you fucked us. No, <laughs> that's my fault. Uh, my bad, guys. I'm kidding. Um, wow. Wow. Well, it's always Bye. a treat, but we've got some dooms to save. Indeed. Yeah, maybe we'll find one on the way. He also turns and says, Should you find yourselves not wanting a particular Glidokin, or find yourselves having two of the same family, you'd be more than welcome to donate them here to the Glidokin Shrine. Doing so would provide a certain amount of harmony to the region. Uh, she's basically saying if you have extra Gledokin and you donate them here to any of the shrines in any regions, you will raise the harmonic flux by team point. Oh, dang. What's our flux look like? Because I'm sure we've got a Gledokin we're not going to use. Uh, what, 85 out of 100? Let's top it off, eh? Well, yeah. well if we go and snap up that witch, maybe. Hmm, true. Do we have any kind of basis for how much that witch is probably going to be? Like, it's probably not going to be 10 or maybe it'll be about five. <laughs> can, can we even can we even do anything to that witch? I don't even uh, know if we can tackle it. 
I figured since we were going after it, that was the idea. I didn't... I want to talk to the Lich. I'm sure ah. he has a lot of interesting things to say. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. Maybe this is all just a big misunderstanding. Why does everyone assume that the Lich is bad? <laughs> Historic evidence. Okay, I'll fair. I'll give that one to you. <laughs> all right. Uh, so are you done here at the Gleedle Contrine? I think so. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's from. gamble. Let's get rid of one of those Gleal Kim top off. Yeah. Uh, here, here's the only question with that, though. Um, no. Do you have any copies of Gleal Kim? I don't think so. No, okay. no. So you'll want to hold on to the ones that you do because that's the that's the count of how many individual ones that you have, right? Um, so you'll want to get one more individual one to get yourself to eight. So if you give one away, you'll be back down to. Oh, we want to get a total of eight, not eight Co individuals. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was like, oh, come on, we found the first variant, and now we don't need to keep on to it because we no. found the first. But if you do happen to run into any more that are copies of ones you already have, then those could could for sure be donated. I gotcha. Well then. Let's go rich some dudes. Yes. Let's do it. Let's uh, let's, let's move on. Keep on moving on. Lincoln's got a circlet of blasting on one antler and a, a cocoon of moths on the other antler. <laughs> looking for you. Thank you. <laughs> God. <laughs> I love Lincoln, man. He's one of my favorite characters I've ever played. <laughs> it's that old pacifism card for Magic the Gathering, the undead. Yeah, 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, unless you're trying to push things, you'll need to rest here for Let's 12 hours. No need to strain. All right, sleeping here for another 12 hours. That puts you exactly at the same amount of time the next day. That's three more marks off the harmonic flux. Everyone, give me Constitution saving throws. Unfortunately, these temple grounds uh, aren't large enough to house anybody to sleep in, so you guys gotta sleep outside. Jeez, we brought you all these cool bugs to look I know. at. I know. <laughs> we, we, we let you look at our shit. We can't sleep in your house? <laughs> Come on. We showed you bugs. <laughs> respond. Pull the couch I out for us. I showed you my bug. Please respond. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> all right everybody should be good yep all right you wake up and it is a new day after getting some cool stuff from the scuttle shrine it is time to move on ping me Pangus, let's go southwest all right southwest here we go Shoop. yeah that one mark off the uh, scuttle shrine if you want going to be two hours travel uh one more survival check at advantage from uncle jimmy as the last bits of the blight time fade away nothing happens on the square luckily uh yeah you guys are fine um ping me because <clears throat> we can walk through this right yeah 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 well do we want to go through go do we want to go through dudes or just yeah or? we should we could let him know we're coming. Let the dudes know we're coming. Mm -hmm. here. Another two hours. That's another mark off the harmonic flux, Kibino. And this is technically light times. It's with gold. Okay. All right. And then one more as you shift over to dudes. You can mark off that X behind you. And that puts us at five light time. About close to midday now. Damn. Insect plague doesn't fuck around. Jeez. 300 foot range. It's a fireball of locusts. Or moths in this case. It's pretty dope. 
you all begin to pull into the town of dudes. <laughs> uh, you see several burly men who are um, building a few pieces of housing here. Um, there are a couple merchants here. Uh, you see the same tavern that you saw before and ask for some information. Street's not nearly as littered as what you would assume for, uh, it's not a huge settlement, but you would assume that in uh, a settlement at this size would have more action going on. And it seems like uh, many of the townsfolk here are either missing or just not here. Not a lot of dudes. Not a lot of dudes. Can we find the uh, innkeeper again? Sure, sure. You stop by the inn, stepping inside. Uh, you see the innkeeper uh, wiping off uh, the tavern counter as a few um, very muscled men are sitting at the bar stools, uh, clanking their uh, tankards of ale and downing them. Uh, the barkeep kind of cocks his head and sees you all come in and says, Ah, oh, come in, come in once again. Hello, fellow travelers. Mm. We are here to help with the lich situation. The lituation, if you will. <laughs> Lincoln wouldn't say that. No. <laughs> I, was I was wondering. <laughs> that was a lot of Strike that. That didn't happen. That wasn't real. Lincoln, can we check to see if Lincoln got that sickness as well? Because his personality is completely changed. Uh, uh, your, your funny bones showing. Hey. Right hey. You see the two men who are sitting at the bar. They they put their tankers down and actually turn to eye you as the uh, tavern owner turns and says, All right, excellent. We could always use a little extra manly muscle. Most of our townsfolk, well, the able-bodied ones are over there now. I'm sure it would be an incredible boon to have you join the ranks. Well, if there's nothing else we should know, we'll be on our way. I would say that most of us are abled body. We could bench press an ox. However, <laughs> the powers of a lich are powerful indeed. And I'm sure from the looks of the rather eccentric makeup of your group, you may be in possession of more than just might, perhaps a little magic along with that. Or am I incorrect? Your, your magic, Ooh. right, Professor? Sorry, I was camped out. Yes, I'll send you <laughs> to move the story along. Good. Perhaps a little counter magic could stop whatever evil machinations this lich has for us. Pain in our side. I've already marked it on your map from what I remember in your previous trip. You'll want to head that way. Can't miss it. A tall tower standing several stories in the middle of the swamplands. You'll likely see the outskirts of it. Lit aflame with the torches and pitchforks of our people who've already made our way over there. If you need more information, you'll want to speak with them. I wish you the best of luck, my friends. And I appreciate the extra help. What was his name again? Uh, Fasner. Fasner. We'll say that you sent us. I appreciate it. They all come here occasionally. They'll know my name. Go beat the shit out of that lich. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> we will we... rid the land of it. Yes. After talking to it. <laughs> Hmm. To ascertain that it is evil before killing it. <laughs> I feel comfortable. <laughs> and other good things that we will be doing. It, I, I just have a feeling it's not a lich. You like just dropped your doll down and it's just screaming and they're like, ah, oh, evil match. It's got to be. It can't mm -hmm. be a real lich. Impossible. I have my doll right here. <laughs> We, we go do the thing. All right. Ping me! Does, must have been you traveling yeah. here. It does seem improbable that the false hydra is not the worst thing in this in this region. <laughs> so so here's what we do, guys. We we ramp 
the wagon off of the plateau yeah. onto the Lich's Tower, through right. the roof, right into the boss arena, and then begin the final encounter immediately. That's, yeah. that's the plan. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. good with, I'm good with that, as long as we throw in a sick donut on the way. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, can can you cast catapult on the wagon with us in it and just launch us right. into it? A little too heavy for that. What a shame. Uh, nothing happens here. Sorry, when I'm being quiet, I'm I'm doing background things. It's okay. Uh, we can keep ourselves occupied. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we got sounds to play with. Like we got, we can do everything. That's two more ticks off the harmonic flux, Kevin. Or no, I'm sorry. Just one more tick off the harmonic flux. Is the last bits of your travel, uh, bring you? to a tall tower in the distance. You see that the tower is surrounded, not too dissimilar from what Fazner mentioned to you all. You can see the ambient light of torches burning in the distance. Uh, you can hear the rabble of what sounds like town folks, and you can see the silhouettes of them gathered and compacted at the base of the tower. Uh, there are few windows to the large stone tower that sit before you. However, at the topmost point, you can see there, there does do appear to be through one of the near windows that sit at the... Uh, from this distance, just trying to judge, this thing looks like it rises probably 60 or so feet up in the air. You get the sense that there is a little ambient light coming from the very top of the tower. Um, as you press in forward with the rest of your group and you turn, you see uh, several of the townsfolks of dudes all almost uniformly burly, incredibly muscled as they turn and view you and say, Hail travelers! Careful passing through this region. A dangerous lich has taken part in this tower here. Accursed us for some time at our nearby settlement. Be wary. We are indeed wary of the Lich. We were sent... Go ahead. Yes, tell us what you know. We are here to help. We've been coming from dudes. I couldn't make that one work. <laughs> oh, no, you made it work all right. Oh, so you've already been to the town. We've been in that of dudes quite a few times in the last couple Excellent. So you're well acquainted with dudes then? Like you wouldn't believe. Please stop asking me follow up questions about dudes. <laughs> yes. uh, the lich who occupies this tower, a curse in our sides. When we discovered that she made this her residence, we attempted, as all dudes should, a rather courtly and kind interaction. However, things have turned sour. She's backstabbed us. She's tortured our village for weeks now. And we want revenge. Retribution. And how precisely has this creature been torturing you? We had a large field, special grain, this grain we would grind up into a powder, full of protein. Each of us would consume it. No way. It would give us great energy. However, she has burned it, sapped us of our resources destroyed the very stock of what makes dudes itself what it is, he says as he flexes a muscle. The, the, the protein, right? Correct. I love protein. Uh, well, that burning crops... I mean, I don't eat, but burning crops seems evil. It sure does. What prompted her to do such a thing? It doesn't seem a good way to make neighbors. Not at all, no. We seek her presence to ask her the same, but she remains hidden in her tower. We are contemplating going inside, though we have no means to be able to reach the top. 
You see, she has locked her lair up tight. We cannot enter through the front. And we have yet to figure out a way to reach the window that allows us entry to the top floor. Yeah, most dudes do. Don't worry. Uh, well, we are quite adept at getting where we don't belong. Oh, <laughs> then. So perhaps you may have a way to penetrate. <laughs> yes. Well, we don't know for certain, but we can certainly try. Have you tried talking to her? Many of us have, yes. Uh, many of us have tried to have uh, friendly conversations, civil things with her, but she has denied them all. She no longer speaks with any of us. And the last <coughs> act that she wrought on us was burning our crop of valuable protein. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, m maybe we can get to the bottom of this. Sometimes you just have to be a little bit more forceful in a different way. Well, should you find some means to be able to enter through the top floor to get inside her personal room? They all sort of look at one another. The one speaking to you all turns and says, We would ask that you do not destroy her. If it comes oh. to that. You seek to spare the lich. Yes. That... That, that, does, that seem unusual to anyone else? It seems, uh... Odd. She's burnt her... Fields, and... Yet you do not wish to... Re repay her mean meanness? Um, it's getting late. I'm losing my... <laughs> I... No, we do not wish death upon her. You, you don't wish death upon something that is undead and has stored its essence somewhere else so it can't die? I don't understand. What does all of that mean? What do you mean, what do, what do what, you think what, it's a lich? What do you mean, what do I mean, what do you mean? You say it's a lich, liches, they don't die, they're already dead. They take their, their being outside of their body and they can't die because it's hidden somewhere. You see the tall one turn to one who's almost as tall but maybe two inches shorter and slaps him on the chest and says, You didn't tell me she could come back to life if she died. I, I didn't know. No, she she's not coming back to life. She's already dead. Well, we were aware of this, yes. But <coughs> we weren't aware that she could come... We don't understand any of this. We know that she's called a lich. She told us so, but we weren't aware oh, of the okay. mechanics. Some, sometimes people refer to themselves as different things to confuse people. So I think maybe we can figure this out for you. Maybe take a little bit of the guesswork that's making things confusing for you out and uh, we can get back together and help you. But if you say do not destroy it, we'll try not to. No promises though. What does she look like just out of curiosity? She look like a man. She looks like a, a a lich. Yeah, that checks out. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think I think everything's on the level here. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, if only about them. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. There was a time when we were able to speak with her uh, before. I suppose the relationship turned sour. So. Perhaps if there was in some way a, a mutual benefit between the two of us, she has destroyed our crop of wheat that we use for our protein, but perhaps there is maybe something that she could gift us in return. Uh, we've had conversations with her before, and perhaps she may uh, be understanding. We do not wish to seek violence on her. Hey, duly noted. Well, I wanted to talk to the Lich anyway, so this works out perfectly. Yes, I also wonder at the timeline of this. How you say she moved in recently? Well, we discovered that this was her lair a um, few months she... back. Is the, was Has this place been unknown to you before now? 
correct. But it's... I can see dudes from here. Well, yes. We saw that there was a tower here, but this tower has been here for as long as we can remember. We did not know that it had come under occupation of her. So it's a recent occupation, I guess is what I'm asking. We do not know. We I discovered that she made this uh, her place of residence some months back. But she I'll hasn't see. always been here. Oh, uh, no. There was a time when this place was uh, unoccupied. We're not sure how long, but for a time it was. Hmm. Well, that is interesting. She uh, ever ask for like any offerings? You ever bring her anything to like uh, you know break the ice or something? You know something? You know. We bring her things all the time, all kinds of offerings. She refuses all of them. She no longer speaks with any of us. We're civil men. We just what's, wish what's, to speak. What's the last thing you brought her so we don't uh, offend her further? What's the last thing we brought her? He turns to the other group. Uh, you hear several of the members of the group begin to say, uh, some of them say some of the crop works that they have. Another one says he butchered several of his swine to... Uh, bring the meats and foods to her. Another says he brought several bouquets of flowers and yet nothing in return. Hmm. Well, no wonder she's not talking with you. She doesn't have any use for any of those things. Then you seem like travelers who have come from various parts of perhaps the passage, perhaps even out of it. If we were to ask what would a woman of her lichness seek what would make her happy what would entice her to speak with us again are these guys a bunch of undead simps this is very, uh, I'm here for it <laughs> this is a very toxic attraction let me tell you now souls Bones, corpses, that sort of thing. Actually, been bringing her the wrong things. <laughs> Waking uh -huh. cracks all three of his hands and says, Leave this to me. <laughs> uh, well, yes. If you wouldn't mind, yes. If, if you can make some headway, I'm sure she would understand. Uh, we had. Simple requests during our initial talks, and things have soured. We just wish to reestablish that, right, men? And the rest go, yes. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's see if we can't figure something out then. The only noticeable window here that does appear to have lighting coming from it is at the top of the tower, about sixty feet up. Ugh. And there's no like door or anything. There are two front doors uh, made of stone. Hmm. Maybe there's a magical way inside? Any, anybody, anybody got anything for that? Um, so I can do some sort of history check on the stonework as a dwarf. Oh. I don't really have anything here other than Taking some time, getting what what's it called? Like, meld with stone and putting myself inside the tower by just walking through it. I don't really have anything here. Those are my two options. Yeah, what's it? What's it about? Tell yeah, us just take about. take a look. Yes. Uh, can Forte can inspect the two stone doors? See if there's any sort of uh, rune work. Uh, Can't what miss. what type of check? This would be a history check, which I would get an advantage having, um, stone cutting. Stone cutting, yeah. Sure, sure. <sighs> be a twenty. Ooh. Um, an unnatural twenty. Stronghold D and D. Hello, welcome. Um, the party is trying to see what they can figure out about getting to this lich's tower. Um, Forte. 
These types of stonework doors are probably heavily fortified. They are doors meant to uh, have enough berth to allow things into the tower, but should they need to be closed and have a formidable way of locking, uh, making progress inside very difficult. And from the way that the stonework has been rendered here, and with that unnatural 20, you also get the sense that um, there may be multiple ways that this door is locked outside of just the standard uh, means. Maybe additional defense is part of it. Hmm. It seems to be fortified. Uh, probably the way in and way out, but I don't really see how we're going to get in unless she wants us to use that way. Uh, well, does anyone have any rope? Plenty of rope. Hand it to me. Uh, we got uh, da, 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 50 feet of silken rope. I think we need a little more, don't we? 60 feet up, right, Jason? Yep. No, no, that's that's fine. I uh, I can do that. I got these these really long arms you see. I've got oh. hemp rope. That's not. Oh. What about everyone else? Even if you have long arms, that doesn't help anyone else. Yeah, I, I have just, uh, 50 help. feet of hemp in rope. Let's I tie them together. Um, Lincoln can take the rope and just climb up. Yeah. Yeah, like a spider. Yeah. He, he, he has 35 feet of climb speed, so. Yeah. Well, then. We got so druids like, too that can turn into birds and get up there and yeah, like a uh, like a cockroach when the lights turn on. Lincoln skitters up the side of the wall and and looks in the window. Um, you skitter up the wall, Lincoln, and as you peer through the window, you see a singular room. Um, the top of the tower here, as you peer inside of this room, appears to have only the single window looking out. The interior of the room, despite looking like a traditional uh, tower, perhaps a mage's tower, wizard's tower, the interior here is well furnished and almost reminds you of a room that someone of some means would have, like a noble's room. It's well furnished. The items here, uh, you see a couch, several chairs. Um, they seem to be of high quality make, though older. Uh, you see a very large uh, queen-sized or uh, king-sized bed that sits at the opposite side. You see uh, a chair that sits at a desk with a massive full-sized mirror that seems to be some type of perhaps uh, area to uh, apply makeup or something that like a standard female uh, or a person who would apply makeup may have. Um, a big rug with a large sort of a bare skin face at the, the edge of it. Um, and a lantern that hangs from the top of the ceiling that's lit by candlework, uh, giving that light that you initially saw up here. Um, you do see a door at the other side that probably leads to a set of stairs that descends down from this room, but you don't see anything else in the room. Uh, is there anything I can tie off the, um, the the rope to? Yeah, there's like a nearby um, uh, like a torch holder on the wall that looks sturdy enough where you could probably tie your end of the rope to. Okay, I, I do that and then poke out. Well, I guess I go inside. I, I tie off the rope. I poke my head out and give everyone a thumbs up. Okay. Just imagine the first person pulls on it. It's just strapped to an ottoman. It comes flying. <laughs> Whoa! Lincoln will also like like counterweight against it too, no, yeah. just in case. <laughs> Only okay. because you asked if there was something sturdy. <laughs> Up we go. Away. <clears throat> yeah. Do you want us to make checks to climb up there? Or? Uh, no. It's sturdy enough. You all can climb up. Uh, so everyone's climbing up to get inside the room along with Lincoln. Yes. Okay. Each of you, Forte, Uncle Jimmy, Tyne, Opie, Professor Bark, you're all able to ascend. You hear the chants of the men from down below. Climb! 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 Real subtle, guys. 
Well, each of she you, knows we're here now. Each of you make your way into the interior of the top room. As each of you take a look around, you begin to hear what sounds like a voice now that each of you have entered. The last of you climbing over the stone window seal. Um, a voice that seems to pervade the entirety of the area. And you hear the voice ring out as it says, Hello, Jess, disturb, Cinder. Oh, that's no, Jason. That's... I got a hello there, but that was like ultra warped out. Uh, yeah, yeah. So at least the stream heard it. Uh, the voice says, Who dare disturb Cinder? Cinder? Cinder. Then maybe we should have knocked Fairly. first. Fairly. <laughs> and that is where we will end tonight's set. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Look at timing. Yeah. So we'll pick up and see what happens next week with uh, you all deciding to go encounter a lich. Um, We're just talking to her. We're sure. just talking to her. Sure, just yeah. a lich, yeah. We're just friends. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone, for hanging out on the stream tonight. I appreciate it. Stronghold D&D, thank you for stopping by. Ebred, oh. thank you so much for popping in. Mirza, Discordian. Uh, Bay was here earlier. Thank you for popping in, Bay. Kenny, thank you for coming in and dropping all that knowledge uh, in, in like a s novella form of the perfect uh, mobile thing to take with us on here. I appreciate all that. <laughs> we're, we're about 26 sessions in here, so I don't know if we're going to be able to make all those adjustments that you'd like, but, <laughs> but I appreciate all the advice all the same. Thank you so much. Uh, Mama Bear, thank you all for stopping in. Uh, if you enjoyed the content here, I'd love for you to give the channel a follow uh, and... Uh, we're trying to build towards 1k followers. That'd be awesome. Uh, but otherwise, have a fantastic night. I don't think I'm going to raid anybody tonight, but everyone out there, take care of yourselves. Drink plenty of water. Stretch your legs. And we'll be back next week for more Lucent Odyssey. Until then, if you want to support the channel, you can check out the links here. Uh, go check out our Discord. And I run D&D games with an open seat on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern time that takes place in the same universe as this one here. So go take a look at the details. If you'd like to join that game, hit me up either on Discord or over there and start playing. Go check it out for a session. It's half price. That's a lot of fun. Uh, so thank you, everybody. We're out for tonight. Take care of yourselves. We'll be back next week. Goodbye, everybody. Cool.